to a, a beautiful edition of the Lyle Style Show. Here, I'm your man, Lyle Van Harris. I'm here. Uh, we have a special guest on my show. He, he, he's running for city council. It's a special election that's coming up this Tuesday. And uh, I'm, I'm talking with, with Bruce Teague. Teague's. Teague's. Yes. Teague's, okay. I, I'm bad with names, but thank you. Thank you <laughs> again for being on my show, my, my friend. I'm happy to be here, Lyle, and I, you know, again, it's an honor to be in your presence and all the work that you've done and all the ones that you've interviewed. I'm, I'm happy that I'm on, on your show. Finally, <laughs> I made it. Oh, wow. Uh, you, know, you, you know we got something in common. We talked a little bit before the show. We got something in common, we, you know, so I'm excited to hear about people that you know, that I know that I'm going to get on my show pretty soon. So. Yes. Yeah, yeah. But, but, but okay, getting to what you're doing, you're, you're running for city council. And, and running for city council, um, I want to, the first question I want to ask you, ask you a little bit, um, when, you go, when you go door to door and speaking to the community members, what are some of the biggest concerns that they have? You know, the interesting thing is um, when I go door to door, one, they're surprised that it's me personally knocking on their door. Um, and I think that they also want to know who am I as a person? Sometimes mm -hmm. I think you know, the, the concerns of certain things uh, come up, I'll ask, you know, what's important to you or do you have any concerns about the city? And many people, you know, at, at a first glance will say, no, I don't. But then after a while, they'll begin to navigate on a few items that they do have concerns about. And so that's where, you know, I can begin to really understand what their concerns are. Mm -hmm. But a lot of individuals, they honestly just want to know about who is Bruce T, you know, mm -hmm. yeah. and what can you bring to the table? And, and so I, um, you know, have just honestly been pleased to just knock on people's doors and find out, you know, um, what their concerns are, but more importantly, get them to know who I am so that they're comfortable with making a choice when they go to vote on October 2nd, tomorrow. Tomorrow, that's right, that's right. Okay, well that's, that's, a, well that's, a, that's a wonderful answer right there. And it's a, okay, now my next question I want to ask you about, uh, 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 as you're a person of color, uh, what, what would you bring to the, to the city council that they currently uh, don't have? So I think our city council does really well at getting out and learning about our community. Mm -hmm. um, I think um, b the black community, for, for example, I think they, they make great efforts in trying to understand and to connect. Um, but there is a difference uh, when we're talking about um, a minority com community. Um, I'm black, of course, um, <laughs> so that's a community that I'm a part of. And you know, when I think about other minority groups, I think that that's something that I also connect with. And there's lots of minorities uh, within our community. And so when I'm on the council, and I can talk about something from a minority group or even the disenfranchised, um, those that are disenfranchised, then I can come from a personal place mm -hmm. where um, I understand firsthand, you know, the, the items and the things that minorities deal with. And so that's what I feel that I can bring to the table and to really educate and to um, advocate um, real life situations that um, maybe the counselors don't totally understand. And so that's what I think I'm gonna bring to the table. Well, I would, that's a good answer right there. You're gonna you're definitely bring, bring that to the table, something to the table uh, to, help, to help people uh, of color, people, minorities, whether it be black, you know, Hispanic, whatever, you know, all different kinds yes. of things. Um, and, and so, and also now I've heard, heard, heard you're a business owner. Yes. And here, here in Iowa City. So how do you feel that will help you uh, in this, in this, with the city council, to help with the city council? How have you been a business owner? So 14 years, I've um, started um, Caring Hands and More, and we've been operating. And uh, it's a home care agency. We care yeah. for seniors, persons with disabilities. Um, we even have lawn care, pet care, um, housekeeping. And it's all services that are geared to keeping um, elders in their home is an aging in place uh, concept. Mm -hmm. We also staff the birdhouse of Johnson County or the hospice house of Johnson County and we also have the crisis beds of Johnson County. So a lot of my work has been dedicated to um, serving those in our community that have personal care needs 
and mental health needs. And so that's um, something that I'm, that I'm very proud about. I started 14 years ago with only three employees, mm -hmm. and now I have 83 employees. And wow. so that's a great thing to, um, you know, for me to be a part of from the beginning until now. Mm -hmm. Fiscal accountability, I feel, is something that's, um, you know, definitely um, required for a city council to have, and I feel that I can bring that to the table to ensure that we have fiscal accountability in everything that we do. The other thing is just being a small business owner, I've navigated um, through the business uh, arenas of our community, and so I know what it means to have to apply to the city to have something rezoned. I, I, I've been through that process. I also know what it means um, when the city comes out and um, you're asking them to approve a project and, and that process that you have to go through. And so as a business owner, I feel that I can bring um, that knowledge, um, firsthand knowledge of what it takes to be a business owner in Iowa City, some of the uh, challenges that business owners face. One would be uh, transportation, which I'm almost certain if you're uh, if you have any set of questions, transportation mm -hmm. is going to come up on your <laughs> that's question. That's one of my questions too. <laughs> so I'll wait on that. Uh -huh. Okay, okay, okay. That's good. I mean, you, you answer that. I, I like to answer that. You, I think that you you said it very articulately you know, and, and explain what you can bring to to the city council. Um, but but one of my other questions I want to ask you, you know, um, okay, as someone who has been on um, on food stamps and on Section Eight. Um, for housing, how does that help um, help you to um, to re uh, to re to relate to low income uh, individuals in the Iowa City area? How how would that how would that how would that help you to relate to them as a city council? So what we know is that uh, there's a large amount of uh, individuals in our community that um, they're not middle class. They're mm -hmm. um, you know they struggle on a day to day. Um, and what they really need is someone to understand um, their needs um, and how to advocate for them. And so when I sit on the city council, I'm also sitting there as a person that has been on mm -hmm. food stamps, uh, now known as EBT, um, mm -hmm. um, as well as I've had housing assistance. And so when we're talking about affordable housing and the need for affordable housing, you know, there's a few things that I think that we need to talk about. Mm -hmm. And one would be, you know, we need to ensure that affordable housing is available to individuals that need it in our community. So we need to increase our affordable housing. How do we do that? There are some things that we can look at uh, on doing that. Currently with TIF monies, we know that um, units uh, that are um, approved for affordability will be expired within 10 to 20 years. I think that we need to look at how we uh, do that from the start um, and, and not have something that will expire, but something that will be sustainable and they're present for years and years to come. So I think that's something that we need to look at. The other thing that we need to look at for affordable housing is ensuring that it's spread out throughout the community. We can't have a cluster of, you know, affordable housing units in one area and really believe that, you know, there will be many individuals that will be able to pull themselves up out of that, you know, type of um, environment and mentality. And so there are some things that um, we need to look at. You know, um, transportation is a hindrance for people. We'll, if they don't have the means and the ability to, you know, get around our community, I'll look at if we want to have new, um, if we want to have new businesses come to our community, you know, we have to ensure that there's a workforce ready and mm -hmm. transportation, if people can't get to second and third shift and, and Sunday services, transportation will be a hindrance to people. And so I think when I talk about, and that's some compassion, you're going to have mm -hmm. to shut me up <laughs> because when I start talking about, you know, uh -huh. the needs of people yeah. that are on food stamps and need assistance, uh -huh. um, I will advocate to the end to ensure that basic human rights are met. Oh, okay. Now, see, now that's a good segue of the question I want to ask you. Um, okay. Tell us a little, little bit about in detail about uh, human rights and 
So a human rights city, um, there's a human rights committee, uh, communities, human rights cities um, that are taking place throughout our nation. A human rights city is, um, the basic premise is this, where we ensure that we're meeting the needs of our community, um, those that are human rights related, and that would include food, water, shelter, livable wage, health care. And so where I'm coming from um, would be um, let's start somewhere and start having the conversations of what a human rights city is. So the way that this starts out is we look at and find the needs of our community. We go out and take a survey. We go out and do whatever we need to do to come back with those needs. And then we present this to um, the city manager and then and the city council. And then we began to build our budget based on the needs. Currently, the way that the budget is uh, based on is we get a budget from this, you know, um, given to us, and then we have to work within that budget. A human rights city says, let's find the needs of the community, and then we build a budget around those needs. What mm -hmm. happened is this. If people began to have their human rights needs met, then all the other things that we're paying for and response services will begin to see dwindle down. And so mm -hmm. the police, the ambulance, and all this other stuff, hospital stays, uh, mental health crises, we'll begin to see those uh, dwindle down. There is a perfect example that is happening in our community now where um, it's called Housing First. Mm -hmm. It's a Housing First model. And this model says, um, we're going to give a house to an uh, individual that needs it, that uh, has a mental health issue. So the individual moves in uh, into the house with no stipulations. They can be on, um, they can use drugs, they can be an alcoholic, they can, you know, be off their medication, they can, you know, essentially we're just giving them a house. And what happens after that, they have the shelter and they begin to feel comfortable and they begin to feel safe. And with time, they begin to feel better. And the things that we wanted them to achieve personally, they, be they began to do it. They began to uh, seek medical help and take their medication properly. They began to do personal cares. They began to um, you know, eat healthier and um, you know, w seek treatment for drug and alcohol addiction. And so that is something that um, when that happens, all those other services that we've been paying for, it dwindles down. And so that's, in a nutshell, really quickly, mm -hmm. what a human rights city is. Oh, wow. What a, what a beautiful uh, uh, way, way to say it should be around, you know. I mean, because I think that mental health is a big issue, not just only in uh, the state, but just all over the country, all over the world. Absolutely. Uh, mental health is very important uh, in, in things, for, you know, with the gun situation, all that type of thing. So you addressing that uh, in a way to help and mental health and get that uh, taken care of and get people, get their needs met so they won't have to be going, doing what they're doing. Absolutely. Getting them the help, uh, it, it's a positive thing. Now, on, on that note, I want to ask you, um, um, uh, to you, what, what, what are the biggest needs of Iowa City to you? I honestly believe that the, you know, there's so many needs, and I don't know that I can actually rank what the biggest need is. Um, there's a lot of things that is important to a lot of people. For some people, they would say that the biggest need is we need to talk about um, the high density of, um, you know, proposals of I Iowa City, and that would be having lots of um, buildings throughout the community um, in one central location. Um, other people might say that we need to ensure there's bike trails, and mm -hmm. that's really important. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, the infrastructure, the roads where people are riding their bikes and um, cars are being, um, you know, somewhat damaged because some of our roads need attention. Um, so some might say that that's most important. What I can tell you is that there are a lot of needs that are very important. I want to listen to everybody and, and what their needs are. Some things that are very dear and close to me would be affordable housing, mm -hmm. and it would be transportation, and it would be how you know it would be you know certainly um, food, water, and shelter. Those are things that are really really important to me that I feel that we need to 
um, make an impact on and not keep kicking the barrel down the road. Mm -hmm. I, I feel like now is the time and we're going to, um, you know, take advantage of the time now to really get some of these things done. The one thing about uh, affordable housing, I do feel that we have opportunity right now if there were to be, well, there's already in place lots of um, new units going up, lots of uh, buildings, so the vacancy rate is supposed to rise. I feel that now is an opportunity for the city council to take advantage of that because landlords really don't want to be sitting with vacant, uh, empty um, apartments. And so now would be an opportunity to you know, reach out to landlords while those vacancies are present and get what we need, which would be affordable housing, and also have it spread throughout the community. So I, I feel that um, everything that's happening in Iowa City is happening for a reason, mm -hmm. and we can really um, capture this opportunity right now as a city council for the better of all those within our community. Wow, wonder, that's wonderful. I, I like the answer, man. So far, you're doing pretty good with me. You know, I got Thank some, you. <laughs> <laughs> you got some good ideas, great ideas to, <coughs> to implement in, in, uh, in Iowa City, or being on the city council. And now, the other thing that you've been speaking about is about public transportation. Um, have you have spoken about helping uh, with the public transportation uh, issue and on, on the Sunday service. Um, so, so how do you plan to get uh, paid uh, uh, for the Sunday service, if you have service on Sundays, you know, for tr public transportation. Yes. So I do feel that this is a more, um, it's, it's, it's a more complicated question. Um, well, mm -hmm. it would have a more complicated answer. Mm -hmm. um, it is simple, um, the why. We need to do um, transportation different in our city. We need to make it more efficient. And so there is a study that's going to happen that the city, current city council has already commissioned. And so there's going to be a study that comes back with uh, examples of, um, you know, how can we make the busing services more efficient? I believe that we also need to look at other communities. Um, I do know that there's one community where um, all of their uh, transportation is in one, um, is, is, is through one um, uh, company. And so their seats, as we have it here, the busing system, as well as the university CAM bus um, in this community is all in one. And so I think that's worth looking at um, and navigating. Um, I'm not sure what uh, seats uh, regulations are and what the university regulations are um, to be remain as separate entities, but I feel that there is a common thing that we have mm -hmm. um, and that's transportation. I also feel that we should be reaching out to Corville and Tiffin and even North Liberty um, to see what type of transportation can we all have regionally um, so that we can really, you know, be able to go from the east side of Iowa City all the way to North Liberty if we need to. The other thing is that the tran currently there's over 630 something routes in our community mm -hmm. um, per day for the busings, um, for, the, for the bus. And each one of those bus average over $80 an hour. And so if we look at how the routes are going through neighborhoods, over 630 something, I believe that we can do some uh, simple changes um, where we're just looking at, do we, can we put buses more on a main street where they're running more frequent and um, every 15 minutes, you know, and then some of those neighborhoods where the buses are going, you know, through the neighborhood. I know my neighborhood, I have right next door to my house, there is a um, bus stop and you know it's about maybe 15 people that I've seen take that bus throughout the entire day. You know that bus stop if it went just one block up can be on the main street um, and then really be able to eliminate that bus coming down my street. So again I think there's things that we can do. It, it won't be um, fast and quick but I, I think that we can figure out more strategic ways to do our busing system. Wow, wow that's, <laughs> that's a wonderful answer right there. Again, well, so, so far you're, you're batting a hunter with me, young man. <laughs> so I mean, I mean, but, but you know, you, you got a, a big shoe to fill with uh, Mr. Bachaway, he's leaving, you know, and he's uh, taking over his seat and stuff like that. And so, so uh, you're running against someone, uh, a lady, so what would be the difference between you and her? 
<coughs> um, you know, I, I actually like Anne. Mm -hmm. um, I think I've spent some time with Anne, and um, I feel that Anne has um, definitely some history with the uh, planning and zoning. So she has a great understanding mm -hmm. of, you know, that piece with our community. Um, I'm, you know, a very smart cookie, as you say, oh, yeah. <laughs> and, and I can learn, you yeah. know, planning and zoning. Mm -hmm. um, like I said, I've had some um, in, in, encounters with the city already mm -hmm. um, about planning and zoning where I've requested to rezone a property before and um, I got denied and that was the <laughs> best denial ever. Really? <laughs> <laughs> and, and I know that um, that uh, current council is surprised when I say that no for me was the greatest thing that actually ever happened. Mm -hmm. And so again, I think, um, you know, there are differences, I think, on some level between Ann and I, um, but those differences aren't um, that great as far as like um, her knowledge of PNZ, my ability to learn it. Um, mm -hmm. I think um, I have lived experience on so many levels. I've been in this community for 30 years, for 25 years. Long time. Um, I, a long time. And I came here at the age of 17. Wow. I went to West High, um, which at West High, I began to learn local families mm -hmm. within our community. Mm -hmm. Then I went to Kirkwood and then the University of Iowa. At the age of 19, I worked for Iowa City Hospice. And there, I began to work in people's personal homes throughout our community. And I began to um, learn um, you know, inter interact with local people within Iowa City. And my business today is all about interacting with individuals on a personal level without, mm -hmm. throughout Iowa City. And so I think my experiences are my experiences and, 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 and don't have those. And so um, I'm not knocking her in any way. I just feel that I have something that I can bring to the table mm -hmm. that is very unique. And I, I feel that Iowa City um, would like to, um, at this point, have someone that is um, new, fresh eyes mm -hmm. on the city council to look from a different lens. And so um, I do hope that people go out and vote. And when they go and vote, I mm -hmm. even hope they vote for me. Amen. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. That's right. Yes. That's, a, that's, that's a beautiful thing. You know, I mean, you're running for, for the city council. You know, it, it, it's a privilege to do that, you know, because you seem to be the type of guy that has a lot of, a lot of really good ideas, uh, not only for minority people, but for people in general. All people. Because that's what it's about, bringing, Absolutely. bringing, it, bringing this, this town together as one, uh, spreading things, spreading the love with everybody and, and letting everybody have a piece of the pie, you know, from yes. the low income to the middle class. And uh, for what you were telling me, that your ideas with, with the human rights thing, uh, mental health, which is a big, to me, it's a big problem. Yes. And we got to address. We got to get that. We got to get that down packed because we don't need any any craziness happening, you know. And 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 you're, you're just what you're going to do, and how you help and how you deal with human uh, uh, mental health is is a good thing. Really yes. Is. So um, I commend you for what you're doing. You know. If, if, so at this point, what what um, what what is your other strength that you can? Uh, give uh, to Iowa City that would be an asset just for, for myself and to you know, everybody else that, that probably watch the show. I am a very personable person. Um, anyone that meets me, they walk away with a friend. Um, mm -hmm. When we talk about helping people, I'm the last one to leave. You know, mm -hmm. I'm gonna be that individual that, um, and, I, and I think a lot of it honestly uh, was uh, ingrained in me as a child. So my mom mm. was a pastor's daughter. Mm. And so we were at church all the time. Mm. And we set up the chairs, broke the chairs down. We were the, <laughs> <laughs> we were the last ones to leave, you know, throughout my entire life. And even though I know that I was, you know, often crying and doing all types of things ready to go, mm -hmm. um, what, it had, what it did for me was, that's the way I am in my life today. I'm, I'm that person that stays to the end to make sure that the job is done. And I go that extra mile to listen to people. Um, right now I'm doing a lot of talking, 
but I can tell you that I'm an awesome listener. Mm -hmm. I love to listen to people. And then at the end, you know, sometimes people, you know, um, they say thank you. And, and they, you know, you, you've been so helpful. And believe it or not, all that I did was listen and, and just hear them out. Sometimes mm -hmm. we don't have to have the right things to say. We just need to be a listening ear mm -hmm. and allow people to voice their concerns. And so I am a listener. I'm a great listener. And I'm also one that will do action. Mm -hmm. um, as a business owner and to be successful for 14 years, you got to know that you're doing something right. That's right. <laughs> and so, That's right. I um, totally agree, man. Absolutely. And so those sleepless, those sleepless nights that I had, you know, about um, how are we going to, you know, make the ends meet with the, you know, to meet payroll and all this other stuff. You know, I, I've learned how to be a great businessman. I've learned how to, um, you know, really look at what are the needs within our community and, and play my small part to meet those needs. And so I really feel that Iowa City um, is a place that I love for the past 25 years. I have to admit that I do plan to leave at some point, uh, only in the winter, and I'll be a <laughs> snowbird. <laughs> Oh, I love it. Yeah. Okay. I hear you. Winters, I, you want to go somewhere warm. Yeah. Winter time, then come back here. You know. I, oh, I'll yeah. be back. But yeah, I, definitely, yeah. Yeah. You, I want to be a snowbird you're someday. A snowbird. I hear you, man. Someday, snow. I hear you, my friend. When I grow I, up. When you grow up. That's right. Because you're still growing right now. Yeah. I mean, now, we, we got some things in common. Uh, your, your aunt, your aunt or your grandma? She's my aunt. Your aunt. That's, yes. That's a wonderful talented uh, legend in, in the blues, yes. Gloria Hartman. Uh, man, she's gifted. She's sung with all the great B.B. King, B B Buddy Guy, uh, Money Waters, all, all the, you name it, she's she done with it. She's Absolutely. done constantly with it. She's got albums. She's still singing herself. And you got, I mean, so you got the singing in your background, man. With, Absolutely. Besides that, besides that, we're talking about the gospel. And so, uh, and, and also with uh, the group back in the 90s, uh, uh, Voices of Voices Soul. Voices of Soul. You yes. Were, you were part of that group too. Absolutely. And my cousin Ron T. He was the um, the leader of the group. He played the piano. Yes. He. I remember um, him. I remember yes. him so fondly. That's that's so my cousin. So you are embedded in Iowa City, man. Yes. You've been in Iowa City, and yes. so I mean, so you that talent you got there that that you can bring uh, to the city council, and so we only got about two minutes left, uh, city council and stuff like that, and. And you got wonderful things. I really like it that you're going to deal with the with mental health I issues. I like yes. that. Yes. Yes. I like that. And and I've been dealing with it, you know, um, professionally um, the, the, the past few years. And um, I I I really want to take care of Iowa City in a new way. Yes. Yeah. You know, and that's why I'm doing this. I want to take care of the city that I've loved and. This city has raised me since 17 years old, wow. and I want to take care of it in a new way. Wow, and that, that's and, and I'm, I'm glad that you. I think you will do a great job, you know, uh, up doing that. And and so the the election is is tomorrow. Absolutely. Uh, tomorrow, special election tomorrow. People get out there. What do you do? We tell people to go out there and vote. Yes. Get out there and vote. Vote your conscience. Vote yes. uh, uh, for who the, the best person is. I think this young man Bruce will be a really good. Canada, he got really good ideas, uh, beautiful uh, ideas that he can bring to the yes. table, mental health. You've been a businessman, so you do have something to bring, something that will help Iowa City and, and beyond. Uh, so, so um, you got 30 seconds. So, anything in 30 seconds you want to say? Uh, Iowa City, uh, if I Iowa can... City, I love you, I love you, I love you, and there's nothing you can do about it. <laughs> That's your, that's your party gift, man. Yes. I like that. That's, that's your party gift, man. Yes. But Bruce... Uh